Hello and welcome to Up The Villa podcast. If you're new to our channel, subscribe, drop this video a like and get involved like you are doing on every single video. The comment sections are going off. Um, you're all interacting with each other, which is really good as well. Uh, but yeah, keep it nice. Be nice to each other because I did see one that went off a little bit the other day. So just be nice to everybody. Um, even if you don't agree, it's somebody's opinion. Anyway, uh, FA Cup action is coming up. Um, on Monday, we've got Manchester United. What a draw. Again, we've got Manchester United. It's just one of them teams that we are just shocking against. But we did beat them this season. Hopefully, we can do the treble over them as well. Um, so, if you listening at home, get involved in the comment section. Let us know what your memories are of the FA Cup, whether it's Aston Villa or it might be a memory of a different team that, that you just think of the FA Cup. I'd like to know, uh, you know, what your thoughts are, what your memories are, what you think of the FA Cup. Does it still mean something to you guys? Um, so, yes, yeah, so let us know. Um, don't adjust your screens. Ryan is up there. He's back. Um, how was your holiday? Superb. Uh, yeah, amazing time. Amazing time. But uh, glad to be back. Glad to be back on the channel. Miss, uh, missed you guys. Missed yeah. you. You done well. You kept the website together. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, good to be back. It's still going. It's still there. <laughs> but obviously, we could, I, I don't know how you do it because you, you absolutely smash it. It's so complicated. Uh, and you do a brilliant job with that. So, um, fair play. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll start off with everybody's memories then. So start off with you then, Ryan. What, what what's your memory of of the FA Cup? Um, the FA Cup is very fun to me. Uh, it's one competition that I just love us to see us win. I've been to two finals. Obviously, lost them both. So I'm hoping the next one I go to it is third time lucky. But um, yeah, there's quite a few standout ones. The Liverpool semi-final, obviously on uh, Stephen Gerrard's birthday. It was his, actually it was his last FA Cup appearance, wasn't it? And we we uh, we were superb that day. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Bolton as well, another semi-final, uh, winning on penalties when when they should have really beat us. Um, I remember Dean Holdsworth sticking one over the bar. Uh, Reading as well. Reading one that went, goes under the radar. We lost to Man United in the League Cup final under O'Neill. And then we went to Reading. We, I think we were 2-0 down at half-time. And uh, we come back and got a semi-final against uh, Chelsea, which we ultimately lost that one as well. Um, but probably my, my, my favourite moment is uh, when we played Leeds at home. Leeds were doing bits at the time. They had Harry Kuehl and they had, they had a real good team and they were really building something, that the money they were pumping in. And, and, and I think they went 2-0 up as well, didn't they? I remember Eric Backer scoring and, and somebody else. And then we'd come back with like a... Benito Carboni, masterclass. Merson was absolutely magic as well. So I think that guy and the atmosphere at Villa Park was sublime, absolutely sublime. So, um, yeah, I think that one is my, my favourite Villa memory. Awesome. Hannah, do you, do you have any any memories, anything that just comes in your head of an FA Cup memory? Yeah, mine, obviously I've got a bit shorter uh memory to go back on no offense uh guys but <laughs> yeah my, all my fa cup memories in recent memory are quite bad um ryan mentioned the the semi-final win over liverpool which is pretty much my only positive fa cup memory um i think it was like pr almost prime benteke days going one nil down and coming back um and we obviously had to a young certain someone at the time as well which was like so exciting for me um as like a young person myself having another young star coming through the club so um yeah I think that time for Villa as well being so shit in general um that was sort of like a, a glimmer of hope in like a really bad time so that one stands out a lot. But yeah, since then, it's been pretty, pretty poor in the FA Cup. So it's something that like Ryan says would be so exciting to win. It's it's in the domestic trophies. It's the one you really, really want to win. Um, so, yeah, I think it would be nice just to get beyond the third round this year, if we can, um, with Man United on the form they are. I'd like to make some new memories and some good ones. Wouldn't we all? Uh, one of my biggest memories... Bolton, the semi-final, I, I was like a, a young kid at the time. And I just remember like as a football fan, like buying your flags for the game and, 
And it was that whole like anticipation that you would go into like a, a massive occasion. Um, that's one of the memories that I had. Obviously, it was at the old Wembley as well. Um, and I remember that me and my brother were sat on our chairs when it went to penalties cheering because at, at the time as a kid, you just love penalties, don't you? And we were buzzing. And I remember a lot of fans turning around to us, like looking at us. But, um, you know, that's a great memory that, you know, we was able to win. And, and like Ryan said, the, the, the semi-final against Liverpool, you know, big occasions, aren't they? FA Cup semi-finals and, you know, coming up against a team like Liverpool to to, to beat them in, in like 90 minutes was was absolutely massive. And like Hannah said, we we weren't great at the time, but there was a bit of a buzz with Sherwood, wasn't there? Especially that season um, when we beat West Brom as well. So it was just a shame that we, we flapped it in the, in the final because, it was at a time again when Arsenal, you could really sort of go at Arsenal a little bit, couldn't you? You could get stuck into and make it difficult. But I think it was like Walcott, you just like ripped us apart, didn't they? So the finals have been pretty bad, but the semi finals have been okay. Um, Justin, what's your memories? Oh, for me, the FA Cup's the Holy Grail. It's the only thing in my lifetime that I, you know we haven't won. And it's, it's something that since a kid, I went to a, a football expedition, ex, exhibition at uh, the NEC when I was a kid and the FA Cup was there. It was the first proper trophy I ever actually held. I've got a picture of it somewhere. And ever since then, I've just wanted Villa to win it. And, and in my youth, really, in the 80s, sort of all through the 80s, we weren't that good. I think the first semi-final I went, sort of went to was 95, I think Liverpool away. I think it was at Old Trafford. It was my wife's first ever game of football, actually, would you believe? Took her to Old Trafford to see the semi-final and we got smashed by Liverpool 3-0. And then a couple of years, a few years later, got to the final. Uh, the Bolton semi-final was probably my highlight, really, of the FA Cup because we got through and, on penalties and... and uh, and I thought, that's it. You know, we finally got to a final in my lifetime. We're going to go on and win it. Obviously, we didn't. You know, that early goal did us. Um, and then ever since then, we've been chasing to try and get back there. Managed to do it a few years ago. And, you know, very, very, very disappointing final against Arsenal. Um, and then ever since then, I've been looking at the stats. And they're just terrific reading, really, for Villa fans. Read them off then, Justin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And since we got to the final, we've only actually got through the third round once and that, and we got smashed against Man City in the fourth round. And then so six consecutive seasons have been knocked out in the uh, third round. So I think that means we haven't actually won an FA Cup game for six years. So it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, our record is pretty horrendous. Yes, we've had some pretty bad draws, but, you know, in that time we've been knocked out to Peterborough, Swansea, Fulham. You know, teams that really we should be beating, but this is what the FA Cup's all about, isn't it? You know, anything can happen. So, whilst the draw isn't very favourable going away to Old Trafford, I don't think they're in much shakes, and I think we can go there and get a result. So, at the two games coming up against them, I'd, I'd, I'd take a loss in the league, if I'm brutally honest, and get through in the FA Cup because it's a competition we can realistically win, uh, and that's what I want to do. I want us to go and put a trophy on the cabinet, and there's no better trophy in the world in the club competition, in my opinion, than the FA Cup. I know it's been sort of disregarded by a lot of the big clubs in the last few years, but for me, it's still a massive competition and, and I hope one day to see us lift it. I think another thing that annoys me about just Villa and the Cups is, is that if at this moment in time, we're going for trying to get into Europe eventually and that is basically it. So the FA Cup and the League Cup are two realistic trophies, the only trophies that we can physically win in a season. And for us to not take them seriously does my head in. And it honestly did my head in when we went to Chelsea early on in the season and we had no recognised striker on the bench. We played a weakened team against Chelsea. It was so frustrating. So I heard Gerard talking to Carragher about the, the, the cup competitions and that we should be taking them seriously. So I do hope that he does take them take them seriously and we do go for it because I think United, they've got Champions League coming, football coming up. They're not going to be playing a full-strength team. So if we go at it on Monday, there's every chance that we can, we can get something and we can go through in that game. Um, so we'll move on to our predicted lineups now. So I've just rustled up a quick... Predicted lineup of what something pretty strong. What I would like to see, so I would go with Martinez back for exactly the same. I wouldn't change any of it apart from maybe target for Ashley Young if he's fit. I'd go with Louise McGinn and I'd probably go with Chuckamaker in the middle. 
I'd go with Buendia, El Ghazi and Ings. So two little changes, Chukamaker and El Ghazi, and then on pretty much full strength. Ryan, what would you go with? 100% full strength for me. Tyro Mings back in, Ollie Watkins back in if he's fit. McGinn has got to play because he's suspended for the next one, isn't he? Um, and like you say, look, we're, where are we in the league now? 13th, our squad, realistically, we're probably about 11th to 15th place squad at the minute. But we've got a team within that squad that can beat anyone on the day. So we, we've got to go for it. And, and like you, and not like just in reeled off there, all them defeats. Peterborough at home, 3 1. Swansea at home, 3 0. It's it's frustrating. It's frustrating. I've, I've had enough of it. We need to. Have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we need to have a good crack at it. And 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 the the game where Justin said we got to the fourth round. The one before that was that infamous Wickham one where like Mika Richards and Lescott and Guzan are all arguing with the fans. So we've had a wretched time since we lost that final. So for me, hundred percent full strength. And we, we've got to go at this wounded Manchester United side and go there and put the pressure on them. And yeah. Like I say, 100% full strength. We're not going to get relegated. It would take a momentous effort for, to get into Europe in the league. So this is our opportunity and, we, and we've got to take it seriously. And Stephen Gerrard is an FA Cup legend, really, isn't he? He was around when Owen scored them a couple of goals against Arsenal. Then he scored that absolute belt, didn't he, against West Ham in the last minute. So yeah. he, he knows what it's like for this competition. And um, we've sort of ruined his last crack at it as a player. So hopefully he can come back as a manager now and get a bit of revenge. <laughs> Definitely. Hada, what, what sort of lineup do you want to see? Yeah, I think I'd pretty much go with what you said, Luke. Apart from um, if we're going really strong, I'd quite like to see Sants on over maybe Chucklemaker, mainly for minutes as well. Um, I think he really needs game time, and this could be a really good opportunity for him to, to show what he's got. I think the glimpses we've seen of him, although they've been short, have been positive. So I think he could be um, good in the midfield. I think at the minute, Man, Man United are so easy to, to break down and to get through. Um, so if we've got that extra sort of slightly more experienced um, body in midfield, it could really benefit us. Yes, I, I'd also go Al Ghazi up top. I think um, no matter what with Al Ghazi, he's going to have a shot on goal. And, you know, he might miss nine times out of ten, but that tenth time it might go in. So, yeah, I definitely go Al Ghazi. I keep the defence as it is. Um, McGinn, yeah, keep McGinn. He's going to miss the next game. Um, Watkins, again, not sure. We think he might have COVID, so whether he'll be back in time, I'm not sure. But more than happy to have that Danny Ings and Buendia combo again because I think that was one little positive for the weekend. So, yeah, completely all for going full strength. Um, Obviously, we play them again at the weekend, so it's very little um, time to sort of recoup. We're going to have to make some sacrifices, so do you sacrifice the game in the Premier League in the weekend for the sake of getting through in the FA Cup whilst they're still very much um, down in the dumps, struggling and low on confidence? Yes, we've got to attack straight away. Don't hold off for the league game. We go for the, go for the jugular on Monday night. Um, and we know that we can beat them because we've done it already this season when arguably they were slightly better than they are at the minute. So, yeah, full strength for me. I mean, the new manager's coming for them and I watched them against Newcastle and they were absolutely awful. They were shocking um, and they weren't much better against Wolves. But I do think Wolves are, are, are obviously a lot better than Newcastle. But a lot of years, they're there to be got at. Um, I, I just don't think they're hungry enough. I don't, I don't think United are, are, are hungry enough to, to scrap, to fight, to... to they, they just seem like they just don't want to play for anybody. A new manager comes... They don't look like a team, no, I think, is, is a big issue. Yeah. And I think... Um, I didn't watch the full thing, but I think Luke Shaw himself might have even said that he didn't feel that they were a unit last night against Wolves. Um, and if you have a team come up against you who is organised, who's together... Um, and somewhat confident, then, you know, you're already, you're, it's almost like you're a man down because you're completely disjointed. You have not got that um, trust in each other. They look like they completely are jaded and have no trust in each other to perform and themselves. So, 
yeah I think if we show up and you know puff our chests up a bit then they'll they could easily cower away oh, oh, did, did, what, Luke, did Luke Shaw touch on something that they, they weren't motivated enough they didn't feel as a team motivated have you <laughs> tell me now you're playing in front of 75 80,000 fans every week surely that's your motivation right there but uh, I'm with you there Hannah they do look very disjointed I think the signing of Ronaldo and Sancho, did they really need both? You know, they've got Greenwood, they've got Rashford, they've got Cavani, they've got Bruno. It, it, it's, it's just unbalanced them completely. You know, we're struggling to get Watkins and Ings in the same team and they're trying to get all them six in. So you can see where they've lost their balance and their midfield too from Man United. Midfield, so, yeah. I, I grew up in an era, same as you, Luke, Justin, where like, they dominated. They were world-class. You know, they had world-class players and Fergie... Fergie was terrific. And they're just, you'd never hear of them losing at home in the season, let alone they've lost back four games haven't had this season. You'd never hear of them not scoring at home. So where they are at the minute and the manager situation, they're just appointing for six months and review it at the end of the season. Get have a bit of clarity, give the players a bit of um, confidence of what's going to happen. It's like Pogba's not going to sign a new deal now, is he? Like, so yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. Go for them. The moments FC, Man United, that's what they should be called now because that's all. They're, they just leave off moments, leave off Cristiano Ronaldo moments, especially in the Champions League. Um, and that, you know, I, I don't, it's like Hannah said, I don't feel like they're a team. Justin, changes, what would you make? Go for it. Yeah, I would. <clears throat> I'd, um, Martin isn't a back, uh, back to the normal back four, Bings comes back in. I would like to see a slight little tweak ahead of that. I'd like to see three midfielders. Whoever it is out of the four, you've got Sanson, McGinn, Louise and Ramsey. So any of those three out of the four. And then I would try, because it's FA Cup, to go Buendia in, in, a, in, a, in a sort of old-fashioned 10, if you like. And then the two players just play up front together as a two. You know, we find it very, very difficult, as we found all season, to get them into the team together. So playing one out wide and one off the, off, off the other one, you know, hasn't particularly worked great. They haven't looked like they're going to gel. So just try to go straight. We haven't got the wingers. You know, we've got two two gone now. Trezor going and Chora gone to Africa, so they're not there. I think El Ghazi's probably on his way out, if I'm brutally honest. So so we haven't really got wingers. You're you going to chuck the young kid in, you know, as good as he looks. A bidet, so I don't think so. So utilise what we've got. Go strong. Go two up top. Go, yeah, Buendir in the 10. And then three decent, whoever it is, midfielders in behind him, you know. Yeah, they've got Ralph at the wheel, so at the way it's going, that wheel's coming off as quickly as it did for, for Ollie, hasn't it? So I think it's uh, it's we just go there with positive. You know, we had a bad result last week. I'm sure they'd have had it, you know, all week on the training ground. The only thing that slightly concerns me is that that United have lost again at home, so they're gonna be like a wounded animal. But I don't think he'll go as strong because they need the points more in the league. But then will he want to go out of the FA Cup? Because if they go out of the FA Cup in the third round on top of what's happening already, then there could be a real problem there. But when you've got a manager that's only there at the end of the season, is he that bothered? I don't know. I don't know what his priorities are. So um, I agree with Ryan. I think the, the biggest mistake United made was, was signing Ronaldo in the summer. Yes, I know why they did it, because he was going to City. But I think looking back, it's it's just absolutely buggered their whole season up because they're having to try and get a bloke in that just won't sit on the bench, really. Let's be right. And he wants to be the focal point. And yes, he's putting some goals you know, on the board, but ultimately he can't run. He doesn't do a lot else, does he? He just gets on the end of things and moans if nothing's going right and walks off the pitch. So I think we've got to be positive and go for him. I think we can win the game. So I just want to see the best possible team out there. I don't want to see any of the better players on the bench. I want to see them all play. They're all more than capable to play Monday night and on Saturday. So I don't want to hear this. I've got to rest them with this game. And let's go full ball every game now. If we do go out, then we've only got the lead to construct on. So let's go full ball for the cup game and win the game. Awesome. Right. So as some of you can see, I've turned into Fabrizio Romano doing a transfer <laughs> speculation episodes. Uh, so you've heard enough of me going on about it. So I'll, I'll have a couple of thoughts from you guys. Ryan, is there anyone or any of the names linked that, that sort of you're thinking yes? Um, I think the Brentford game for me highlighted that the summer transfer window of 2019 them players have sort of run run its natural course now I think I think um, the likes of Trez Algarzi uh, Courtney Horse I think 
I think we, we need to move on. We need to step up a level now. And, and while they will have a celebrated history in our club with, with the stuff that they've done, you know, back post Trez kept us up, Al Ghazi got us up, Courtney has got us that winner at Old Trafford. They have had great moments in, in their Aston Villa careers and will be remembered fondly, but we need to move on. We need to improve. And I just felt Trez coming off the bench, just lacking it and... Yeah, just weren't feeling it. Just weren't feeling it. I think left back as well, Matty Target. Look, he's, I've, always, I've had like a love hate opinion of Matty Target. Like the first season, I couldn't stand him, if, if I'm honest. I just, I thought he was weak. I thought he was a bit of a bottler. But then last season, he was terrific. He turned it all around, shoved them words right on my arse, and, and, and was fantastic, really. Um, <laughs> But he had the, the foil of Jack Grealish. I didn't know they had a good link up there. And, and you know, Grealish was in the form of his life and, and Matty Target was complimenting him well. But this season, he's sort of going from like an eight to a seven to a four to a, to a seven. It's just so inconsistent at the minute. And and I just feel the way Gerrard wants to play down that wing-back role, that I think that is one position we're going to be looking at improving are we desperate for it now? Probably not. So if the right left back isn't there, then probably not. We can we can make do with Matty Target and uh, Ashley Young till the end of the season, really. But I think that's one of the the main areas for me and a central midfielder. I think we need a boss. We've been saying it repeatedly on all the podcasts before the season kicked off that we needed that general, that dirty bastard, someone that could just come in and and take control. I thought we missed Nakamba very much, uh, very much so against Brentford. So, um, yeah, someone of that ilk. Um, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. But um, we've got, you know, we're not in any trouble and yeah. we've got a squad capable. So I trust that we're going to do the right. We're not going to go and waste any money on anyone that we, a, a short-term gap, let's say. So I think we're, we're looking at long-term, long-term transfers. Hannah? Yeah, on a similar note to that, I think uh, January's of, of years past, there's been some shockers, I don't know. I mean, boy, you're bast on. And Ali Samata, sorry, Ali. I mean, I know he got us that goal at Wembley a couple of years ago, but I hate the panic. You know, January 25th to 31st signings of we need to fill this this gap in the squad. Don't feel like we're at that point. I think as a club, we need to move past that point. Unless, you know, tragedy hits and we're suddenly without a centre-back or something. We're at the point now where, you know, the signings, whether it's in January or in the summer, they've got to be the right signing for the right amount of money. And I don't feel like we need to go out and buy a player now just for the sake of it, um, if it's not the right player. And from what Gerard has said in the media in the last week or so, I have got um, moderate hope, quite positive that he feels the same, that you know, we're going to only get a player if it's the right player. Um, so, yeah, left back, it's such a conscientious thing, isn't it? Because I feel like Target last season kind of shut up a lot of doubters. And then this season, it's kind of gone back to some games. It's quite hard to defend him. Other games, I, think, I still think he's just as good as he was last season. So sometimes I kind of have to swallow the sentimentality because... You know, there's a lot of players in our squad that I really like, but you kind of have to accept that if we want to get to the place we want to go, we've got to improve. So, yes, left-back is probably one of those areas. Definitely need to bolster the midfield. I feel like all the games where we go missing, we go absent, we lose control, it's all from the midfield. It's because the defending from the front to the back just disappears um, and we don't give our defenders enough support um, from midfield and beyond. So again getting another strong body in the midfield um would be really positive who that will be I honestly have no idea it's always the same names isn't it? it's like oh let's get this soon and let's get this let's, you know so I don't know and it's so difficult to get anyone in January especially with the prices so yeah I agree with Brian that those are two areas um I know uh, Luke you've mentioned Luca Dina and names like that who do you know what I would completely support getting a slightly older Premier ex League experienced player because we haven't really signed many of them. I feel like we signed a lot of younger talent or uh, unproven talent and um, people from German leagues or the French leagues that 
you know, aren't always equipped for the the pace of the Premier League. So having someone come in who is experienced, knows what it is, is used to the amount of games, is used to the the strength, the pace of the league would be so beneficial because we don't really have many of those players come into the club at all. And I feel like some games you just need that. You need the experienced heads. You need someone who can just read the game and can also manage the game from on the pitch. We can't always rely on Steven Gerrard to, you know, fix magical um, errors in the game. We need the players on the pitch that are making the right decision and having someone experienced would, I think, really benefit that in our squad because we are still quite a young team. Um, So, yeah, that's how I feel. But again, it's like there's millions of rumours, isn't there, especially on Twitter, Jesus. So um, how many of them are even remotely true? I don't know. We'll see in the next month. But uh, in Gerard, we trust is what I will say. Awesome. Justin, uh, Justin loves a number 10. What are you saying? <laughs> I don't think we need one, to be honest. I think I think there is some glaring holes in our squad. I mean, whilst we've got two good fullbacks, they're decent enough. We haven't got any cover, so we need a right back and a left back. Ash Young isn't a long-term option at his age. So if we're going to replace or we're going to buy a right back and left back, my plan and I'm presuming the club's plan is always buy better than you've got so you buy a better right back than Cash you buy which is tough to do because Matty Cash is a great right back I can't believe Matt people that are sort of saying that we should be replacing Matty Cash I think it's left back is probably more glaring at the moment and uh, I like the Tagler Fico is it Uh, the, the Ajax left back who's got a lot of experience so he's a really good call for me I do think we need a six we haven't got a six in the squad now I think the camera's the only natural six so we need one there and I think we need, we do need another attacking player behind, you know, not a forward, but another sort of attacking player. And I really, really like the Philippe Coutinho link, whether we can get him on loan, because that's the calibre and quality of player really now we should be looking for. And if he's available and we can do the deal, get him on loan. I'm sure, I think he's got a connection with Gerard, So why not? Someone like that. I think that would really do do us well. But like you said, January's tough to do business in. So we'll see what happens. I told you he loves the number 10. I told you. <laughs> right, so we'll go to the thoughts of uh, some of the Villa fans. Uh, we'll go Peter Rafferty. He's put, when Tim Sherwood went into the dressing room during the semi-final versus Liverpool and we came out and demolished them. Chef Mark, he put Carboni demolition of Leeds and his wonder goal. Um, JPT put Carboni goal versus Leeds, Villa Park into thousand or beating Liverpool in the semi at Wembley. What a day. Uh, Regan, also the Baggies quarterfinal at Villa Park. Some night that. Um, Kevin Whitlock, Benny's hat trick versus Leeds. Forgot the year. Uh, Stephen battering 4-0 in 98. Colin Moore was incredible that day. Um, Oka put Carboni, surely. David Stevens, here we go. Massive shout out to you, my friend. Beating Man U at Wembley in 57 and my first time at Wembley, age 12. Yeah. What a legend. He's seen it. Yeah, He's seen us lift the FA Cup. Wow. Uh, Nigel B6 put, seeing Villa deserving to beat Liverpool in the semi-final was a great day. But prior to Albion game at Villa Park was a proper FA Cup um, tie, sixth round, local rivals, decent away allocation, match under the lights, what an atmosphere and what a night. If you were a villain, a great game. Uh, AVFC for life, but the FA Cup semi-final against Liverpool in 2015 was very good. 2015 quarter-final against the Baggies as well, Carboni hat-trick against Leeds. Uh, Danny Barker put Reading quarter-final. And finally, Adam Wright put Leeds 2000, Carboni and Mercer Magic, the Baggies quarter-final, Liverpool semi-final. Uh, to have three at the age of four, 41 is pretty tragic, long overdue a win. Uh, oh, we've got one more. Ashley Worthington, semi-final win over Liverpool at Wembley. So there you go. They're all pretty much the same, aren't they? They're the only things that we can sort of think. We haven't got many, have we? Not many to choose from. Just reread the same one three times. <laughs> for odd from people. Um, yeah. But yeah, so hopefully we can do it. I'm going to be at the game on Monday, so... Uh, you know what my way records like that's tragic as well so <laughs> somebody burst his tyres <laughs> my way record is awful but hopefully right we can win uh, so score predictions let's go um, surely I'm, I'm due one I'm going one nil 
Danny Ings. Ryan? Yes, I am going 1-0. Only took us 20 years to win there, didn't it? So <laughs> let's do two in a season. So, um, yeah, 1-0 again. Let's go with... Let's go with another towering header from the back. Captain's back. Tyro Mings. Love it. Hannah? Yeah, I was thinking of one then as well. We've not, got, we've not got replays, have we? Perfect. This, no. this no. year. And is it does it go to extra extra time before penalty? I'm, I'm not know. sure. I'm, I'm, sure I'm feeling ends. I don't know. I'm gonna say I don't know if we'll, if anything will happen in the 90 minutes. I've just got a bad feeling it's gonna be like a proper, proper nervy one. Um but yeah, I think we're gonna win one now, however it comes. Justin. It's time to write a new chapter in the FA Cup history. Positive note, we're going to do them on penalties. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if United turned into prime United 1999, would it, <laughs> for these two games? But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, feeling well, the positive. We're not going to lose them twice, are we, in a, in a week, surely? So... <laughs> We've got to get... Luke will still be, Luke will still be <laughs> Old Trafford at midnight watching the penalties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think Fernandez is one ain't landed yet, has it? So, no. um, there we go. Right, so thanks everyone for watching an FA Cup little special. Um, cheers for all the support um, and hopefully we're talking about the next round in the FA Cup as well. So, thanks for watching. Up the Villa. Up the Villa. Up the Villa. Up the Villa.